Hey what's up guys, I'm here and welcome back to a brand new video and one that I'm sure everyone and their mother is going to be making this week in the F1 community. But we're here with a tier list because we're ranking the F1 2021 liveries. This is always an interesting video because no matter what, it's going to be my opinion and you, some of you are going to agree, some of you are wholeheartedly going to disagree with me. I've done individual videos for most of these cars so I kind of gave my thoughts a little bit but where do I place them in relation to each other more importantly? But before we get into that, Today's video is actually sponsored by Boohoo Man. Yes, I'm not even joking. How amazing is this? Probably one of my favorite sponsors to get on the channel because you guys know I've literally been wearing Boohoo Man t-shirts in videos for like, what, the last year or so? So absolutely awesome to have them sponsoring this video. And I'm actually wearing one of their new pieces from the Boo Johnson collection that you can get right now. There's gonna be a link in the description to take you to the Boohoo Man website. And on at checkout, if you use the code Arava, you can get 40% off. 40%? That's 40% off all items that aren't already on sale on the website. And yeah, massive shout out to them because, well, like I said, you guys know how much of a fan I am of the brand. Literally a third of my wardrobe is Boohoo Man. And trust me, you can pick up some really awesome stuff. And why not get 40% off by using the code Arava? Okay, we're going to start off. Okay, I feel like we need to get the, the, the gopping one out of the room, really. Now, at the time when the car came out, I wasn't too sure how to react to it because I did kind of like a few bits of the car, and I'm talking about the Williams. Now, I th I honestly may, may have just put this in okay, just because I do like the bit of goldish yellow. It maybe could have been done better, and I think also, especially, uh, it has been done better in people redesigning it. I think one of the best ones I've seen is uh, Tommy from WTF1 on GT Sport, and redesigned it to make it kind of a uh, throwback to the old Canon days of Williams, and it works so much better, and I wish they would, would do something like that. Um, so I did like a few of those little touches, but then it, when you really look at it more, you know, it marinated my mind about that engine cover. And then what did it for me to put it in trash, it is going in trash, by the way, uh, was a comment on the video that I made of the Williams. I, one of you guys, a shout out, it was, uh, why does it look like a motorsport manager default livery? Now, you see, as soon as that person said that, I can't look at that car any other way. It literally, why, 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 it literally looks like a default skin. As some of you guys were saying it looks like one that was made for F1 2020, which is such an insult because like I've said, I maintain most of the custom liveries on F1 2020 are pretty ugly, pretty naff. So if the Williams car looks like that, well, it says it all really. So yeah, I'm sorry, Williams, it has to go in trash. Um, there was so much potential if you wanted to do something with blue, white, and a bit of gold, yellow, you know, just look over it with, like I said, what was being done with redesigns. It could have been so much better. It could have been a classic. It could have been a throwback to your old liveries. But no, we met with this. Maybe it's going to look slightly better on track, as most of the cars do. But I don't know. I feel like almost in a way the Williams is going to look even worse on track with the way that engine cover is designed. Like the way the light's going to bounce off it. Ah. Anyway, that's that. That's definitely going in trash. I'm going to move it to the other side of the spectrum and go all the way to our top tier, Biblical. It's a big stamp to put on a car. But there are maybe two, three cars that I think are Biblical. Maybe two if I'm really being harsh. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. But one that I think is very much Biblical. And I knew it's... I think all of us knew straight away when you looked at the car from the front, from the side, every angle, this car looks beautiful. And it is the Alfa Romeo. Absolutely peng. What a car. That's all I said about the car for the first like three minutes of the video when I, when I was talking about it. Then obviously we delved into the aero and whatnot. Uh, but that's, that's beside the point. Aesthetically though, it's such a good looking car. I don't know what it exactly is, but from the front view... That the way it's just kind of a bit more aggressively lined with the red in certain places, it just looks mean from the front. And then I love the fact that they flipped it on the side because it was getting a bit samey samey for a lot of years uh, with Alfa Romeo, with having the red on the top of the engine cover, the white on the side pods. White on a side pod, I've just never enjoyed because it looks so plain no matter what sponsor you put on it. So I like the fact they've gone with the red side pods. Makes the car a little bit more fuller, feels a bit more fuller and a bit more, I don't know, just higher end basically. And yeah. Just the entire detailing of it is chef's kiss, really nice. I knew straight away when this car launched, when no other cars had launched already, I knew when I was going to make this video, this car would go into biblical. 
Now the next one, to continue on, I'm gonna go with some, uh, another bold, another bold call here. Now, people might be surprised by this because of, uh, what I've said maybe on Twitter and, uh, of course the general, you know, issues and still glaring problems around this team, really, with who they're employing to drive for them this year. But the Haas, you know, minus the irony that it's basically, it's an American F1 team with the Russian flag and colours on it, which is just very, you know, it just, it just makes me chuckle a bit. It's not anything deep. It's just a bit, it's just a bit amusing, really. But um, despite that, uh, that funniness and the fact, obviously, the connotations of why it's in a Russian flag with May's pin and, you know, all the crap that has happened to it with him off track and still I, I disagree that Hass have literally said nothing about any of that. That aside, aesthetically... I actually think it's a pretty good livery. It's pretty good. The guy who's designed it, it's not his fault. He's been given a spec and he's done it to a T. He's really, you know, the designer was getting some hate on Twitter. Doesn't deserve it because as a designer, he smashed out of the park. Like that is the design brief he was given. And it's actually a slick design if we're all being true with ourselves. You know, away from like memeing the team now uh, and all that jazz, uh, it is actually a pretty nice livery. So, so I've got to put it in good if we're being honest uh, about this livery ranking. Now the next one, this this one is, it's tough for me to, to, to kind of maybe explain my thought process because I have said, and I still maintain uh, to this day, the Red Bull livery, it is an iconic livery. Even though I'm so bored of it, it is an iconic livery. Like, remember back to McLaren days with the Marble, you know, cigarette sponsoring. That never changed, and yet people loved it. They were, like, having off on one on it every single year, even though it was the exact same, because it became an iconic livery for what that team was. And the Red Bull team, even though they're maybe not as crazy as they were used in the heydays of Red Bull, you know, the V8 era, they're not the same level, even marketing-wise, I was surprised they didn't do uh, a special camo livery or anything. Like, marketing-wise, Red Bull have actually, in my opinion, really slumped. They're really no longer, even in the top three teams that do their marketing for their F1 team well, which is really odd because they've always been good at that. They're always good at, with that across their entire Red Bull range of every team they own in every sport. But for F1, they've really dropped the ball lately, in my opinion, for what they've been doing marketing-wise, exciting content-wise, and stuff like that. And uh, the livery itself it is like an iconic you know design with the red ball and engine cover but specifically for this you know Aston Martin leaving, Honda being on the car more. I feel like they just could have done something different, a bit more different. I know they're just sticking with it, but honestly, like the livery, gu the guy doing the livery and the brand guidelines, it must be so dull doing that job. And so for me, it's just okay. I mean, it is iconic still, but it's just okay. Like it's iconic, but okay, which doesn't make any sense. But that's where, that's what I feel about it. Right, we're going to go for one of the big hitters then and see what's what. Alpine. The Alpine, it's very great. Is it biblical though? I'm not sure because I feel like, for, you know, in other people's tier lists, you know, they do, you know, great or whatever or S or whatever. But for us, you know, it's a bit special around here. Using the word biblical, even though it's chucked around by you guys in the comments below, like literally every every video now, so it's kind of lost its meaning in a way. To me still, I hardly say it anymore. And so to me, biblical means uh, it, it really is upper echelon. And the Alpine, it's great. Is it biblical? Is it? If I really think about it. Yes. Yes, it is. It is. It is actually a really, really, really naughty car. It's actually really astounding. It's really good. And it pains me to say that because I still don't like the fact they'd be rebranded to Alpine. I just don't like that. I would have preferred Renault, a much bigger car brand, to stay in F1 as that. I know they're the same team, basically. but And I know they, marketing-wise, going back to, you know, with Red Bull, to be fair, it's a great marketing ploy because now everyone's talking about Alpine. Everyone's saying the word Alpine. I didn't even know Alpine was a, was a thing pre when they announced it last year. I'm not going to lie because I don't watch any other forms of motorsport. I don't know much of the history as well, when they maybe used to be uh, in and around motorsport a lot more. Um, so I, didn't, I really didn't know about the brand. So it's working well for them in terms of that marketing strategy. And let's be real, it's a pen car. Chrome blue, chromish blue. The Alpine logo on the engine cover looks awesome. We knew that from the winter like testing livery or whatever, the black one that they used. That was already going to be sick because it is a really cool logo with the way they've done the white stripes and the red background as well on the engine cover. And it, it, it all comes together. The bit of red on the side of the chassis just kind of complements the blue in a way. And then they've got enough black around everywhere on the front wing and the bottom of the chassis that it just looks like a complete 
complete package. Like the Alfa Romeo, all the details of it are really decent and it all really adds up. Really great livery and it all, all those great things add up to it just being a really biblical livery in my opinion. So yeah, the Alpine, in biblical for me. Maybe some people disagree. Um, I'm sure they would because I did see if some... Uh, some uh, the Alfa Romeo, I think everyone agreed it looked peng on Twitter. But on Twitter, there was definitely some mixed reactions to the Alpine car for some reason. Uh, but for me, yeah, no. From the get-go, as soon as I saw it, I was like, okay, okay, good. Right, we're going to come to McLaren. McLaren's livery, I would say it's good because I do like them. I did like the McLaren livery. I like that. But the fact that they've not changed it, I, in, on principle, they need to put it in okay. I really wanted, I was a bit underwhelmed by McLaren's livery. It's a good livery, maybe even great if you see, saw it for the first time. Like la last year's McLaren livery was great. I know... Uh, there's this, you know, there's argument now on Twitter about does it need to change? There's a difference between, okay, massive change, just evolving it. Like, Red Bull used to put a splash of purple, like, with Infinity. Like, why not just go with that? Like, McLaren, just go for a different kind of design of blue or, like, the way the lines work and whatnot. Mercedes, uh, I'll get to them, they've been good at this. They've had the same sort of brand guidelines of the turquoise for Patronus and it's the same sort of thing. Bit on the front wing, goes back to the side pods, but they've always evolved it and every Every year, it's at least a little bit different um, and different enough to be like a nice snazzy new livery. So I feel like McLaren and Red Bull need to take some notes from Mercedes in that department. Speaking of Mercedes, we're going to get to them. Now, I'm actually torn about this because when I first saw it, gopping. Absolutely. I would have even maybe put it in trash, to be honest, when I first saw it. Then I was like, okay, no, it's still pretty, uh, pretty good. Maybe for some angles, it'd be better. But then I saw this photo and it's really disconcerting how much better it looks in this photo alone. Like, the, the I don't get me wrong, the silver part of it still looks a bit weird with the AMG, because I feel like, one, they could have the gradient from silver to black could have been a lot larger or a bit smoother in it on the engine cover. And then the AMG could have been way more subtle. You know, for the most part, during the launch, it was really underwhelming, really didn't gel with it. But then this photo, the, the, the back part still looks a bit weird, but the rest of the car still looks really mean. The minimalistic turquoise part of the car looks really nice. So uh, I'm really, really torn. I'm really, really torn. I'm going to have to just put it in okay. Because I genuinely don't think it's going to look that great on track. Like that, this photo, it looks better, but it still looks a bit off on the rear. And I think in real life, it's actually going to look more off than on when we see the light shining on that back of the car on the engine cover. The rest of the car may look pink. Like literally, the, the, fir the front half of the car... Great. I would put great. But the rest of it lets it down, brings it down to good. I know what I'm going to also do with other cars. So I'm going to put it in good because it's a tier list. It's about kind of relative in which tier. So relative to the other cars I'm about to put. Because Ferrari, let's talk about them. Ferrari, I feel, is an okay. It's an okay car for me. A lot of people uh, don't like it. They would put it in trash. Some people are saying it's pretty good. Some people don't mind the mission. The thing is, with the, wish uh, with the mission we know, that was a tongue twister. I definitely said that wrong just then. That with the mission we know, the green, as I said in the video, I think it's a bit of a PR stunt. I think they'll use it for testing. They'll use it for Bahrain race one. But there'll be so many races where they can't put mission we know on the car. Even Shell tweeted out photos of the car without mission we know. And it looked like a great livery. And I, for one, like the burgundy burn at the back. And I like the numbering. So... Without Mission Wino, it's actually a good livery. I actually like it. But with with the green, the launch, we're talking about the launch spec of this car, it is just okay. It is just okay. With the green, it could be in good. For me, on, a, on, on the right angle, could be even in great livery, because that's how much I actually do like the burgundy and the numbering. As much as I know I'm in the minority there, a lot, a majority, I think, hate the burgundy and the numbering. I actually really like it. So it would be here without the green, but with the green, it's just a bit okay. Probably a lot of people would put it in trash really uh and then the aston martin in a tier of its own great it's a great livery i don't think it's quite biblical yet but i'm excited to really see where this livery goes because with f1 teams 
when they're clever about their liveries and good with the liveries, they like to evolve their liveries, unlike McLaren and Red Bull in the last year. So I'm hoping, like we've seen with Mercedes, like we've seen with, well, I guess Alfa Romeo in a way, they've evolved this year. I hope Aston Martin, this is a really great base, like the mint green, uh, you've got the kind of little splashes of pink. I would have loved if they offset some lime green, the Aston Martin Racing GT3 lime green, like, like a pinstripe almost with the pink maybe, and offset that, that would have been really naughty. I'm hoping things like that they maybe think of, the designers think of, for the coming years. As a baseline, this is a great, great looking car. On track, it looks even better, which just uh, solidifies it in great. For me, not quite biblical. I reckon, though, the Aston Martin in the years to come will become a top, top contender for a biblical livery. Maybe even next year when they start to evolve it, start to get a bit more confident with the livery and what they can do with little, you know, little details maybe here and there. Like, I would love to see some Aston Martin golf wings, like, you know, down the side side pods or something or you know dotted around everywhere um so yeah right now though as it stands their first effort really great livery so that is my tier list as it stands right now but i'm gonna do a bit, a bit of a review here in terms of do i really want to put the Haas on the same level as these two and do i really because well and truly the mclaren it's boring it's the same but it's still a good livery um and the ferrari uh, with the green, uh, look, I'm going to firm it. It's an okay, because with the green, they need to get rid of that. But that's the car, that's the car they're launching with. That's the car they're turning up to testing with tomorrow with the splash of green. So it's going to stay an okay. But McLaren... It is a nice looking livery. The Red Bull, I'm actually fully bored of. Like, fully, I'm bored of the Red Bull. The McLaren, I still look at it and go, that's a pain car. That's a pretty sick car. So I'm going to put that in good. Because I do think, I think a lot of people are being harsh about this year's uh, grid of cars. I think I've seen, seen a few people saying it's actually been the, one of the worst years for cars. But no, I think in general, I think we're, we've got a good colourful grid. We've got a good livery grid. Yes, these two, bit boring. The McLaren, I still am not fully bored of. The Red Bull, I'm fully bored of. This Gopping, Motorsport Manager livery, don't know what's on. Ferrari, take the green off. If they, you know, I, I think they will take the green off and turn up to many of the races uh, uh, without all the mission winnow. And for me, then, it would be great. That would be my actual in the season tier list of when Ferrari get a grip and take off the uh, green stuff. That would be my actual list. But as it stands right now with the launch, the Ferrari's going there. And that is my list. I'm sure I've definitely pissed off people in terms of differing opinions. But that's the whole point of this. It's my opinion. I want to know your guys' opinion. So let me know in the comments below your ranking list. Or actually, I'll leave a link to this below in the description or the comments below. And you guys can make your own and then tweet me or something like that. And let me know that way visually uh, what your tier list is like. So that's going to wrap up today's video, guys. If you did enjoy it, then be sure to smash the like button. And like I said, if you want to get 40% off any Boohoo Man order you're doing, then use the code Arava at checkout. Link in the description. Do let me know what you thought of the video in the comments below. If you're new around here, do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.